I built this custom and rather special cabinet as a kitchen extension for my new apartment. And with this video I want to show you the whole build, hopefully giving you some inspiration. It features three big drawers for beverage crates, a microwave oven, additional drawer space and this special compartment. You'll see later what it can do. Quite a big project. And I built that from these kitchen cabinets that I got from an old kitchen for free and save them from the trash. So without further ado, let's head into the space of the apartment and get started. This is the space of the apartment where the cabinet will be. And I wanted to house this microwave, three beverage crates of different size, a additional drawer for random stuff and this plastic trash collection thing. Where I live, plastic trash separation is a thing. That's why this exists. Everything basically depends if this biggest crate fits in the existing cabinets because I have to work with what I've got. Fortunately, it fits, which means I can base my design around the 33cm wide side panels. I started the design with a dummy of the microwave oven and with more measurements of the space, I could design a cabinet around to where all items fit. The plastic trash on the side, three drawers for crates and one additional drawer. The old cabinets used to be hung from a wall, which was the purpose of this hardware. All of that needs to go. The back panels were stapled, which is a lot of fun to remove. Installing them was probably more fun. Better double check if it's not tipping. The corners of the empty box frames have no visible fasteners, which probably means they are glued together with dowels, pretty solid. Too bad, next thing is cutting them apart. I was right, dowels. Three of the cabinets are enough material for the new one I want to build and I only need to cut the pieces to the new length. I have all my pieces cut, the scraps are nicely organized and I actually have one of the walls left over that's enough to screw up at least one part. What I essentially did is remove all the dowel joinery to assemble this again with dowel joinery. To drill the new dowel holes I cut a piece to the same thickness as the panels, made marks for the dowel locations and drilled them. I labeled the holes with 1 and 2 so I don't get confused and also screwed this piece to the front as a positive stop. To use the jigs, say I want to join these two pieces like so, it basically goes in between them. To drill the holes into this edge, you drill from this side and to drill the holes into this face, you drill from this side. Using the same holes of course. I did a test like this, inserted the dowels, let's see if that fits. Looks good. However, it seems like I screwed up the fronts on the test piece, so I first mark on all pieces where all the holes are. I've laid it out on the floor and marked every joint location. I've got a pair of ones pretty much everywhere except for the middle walls where two boards meet. There I have a pair of ones on this side and a pair of twos on this side, so the dowels won't overlap. And I guess now comes the boring part. To align the jig for the holes that are not at the end of the piece, I can actually use one of the other pieces because that's the actual offset. I first glued all dowels into the ends of the pieces and let them dry like that. I glued the whole thing together in sections starting with the smallest box and I didn't do much of a dry fit but visually the dowels seem to line up pretty well. And if they don't, I can convince them with these clamps. And if that's not enough, they're the big boys. Come on, all the way. There. It wasn't too bad. Let's check for square with the diagonals. 90 centimeters and two millimeters. 90 centimeters and Two millimeters, that's as good as it gets. Next was the bigger box on the right of the cabinet. 99.6, we are not square. Not gonna lie, for dowel glue ups like this, you need big and enough clamps. So far so good, the small box turned out flawless. The big one not quite, about three millimeter off in the diagonals. 
It shouldn't matter and maybe it already gets fixed when I glue in this part. This is glued in and if you look really close, you can see that these holes don't line up with this board. When I aligned the jig for drilling, I used this board as an offset from the bottom edge. But I forgot about this board, so the holes are now exactly one board thickness too low. I screwed that up. What's the solution? Well, ah, screw it. That did the trick. Now it's square and surprisingly stiffer. Now I can glue the two boxes together and finish the assembly. I totally underestimated the trouble I would get from placing the clamps at a slight offset and I had to do most of that glue up off camera. Quite a few clamps now because ideally I would have used clamps that are as long as the whole cabinet for this since I don't have that and these are a bit offset from the actual joint. This tries to bend these sides inwards and actually opened up all the other joints again a little so I had to add these here in spreading mode to keep these walls straight. And then I added clamps everywhere to close all the joints again as good as possible. The glue also sets, this was working under pressure. You next could add a back panel to make it really stiff, however I will only do this to this compartment because the rest visually doesn't need it since it's some kind of drawers. I will however add steel diagonal bracing, but I'll do that later and now use the easy and open access to install the drawers. The drawers probably see daily use and with a full beverage crate weighing about 20 kilograms, I still want them to slide really smoothly. I've tried one of them in a workshop drawer, which has relatively inexpensive slides and that sure does work, but it's not as smooth as I would like. So this time I bought these undermount drawer slides from Bloom. They are about three times as expensive as the ones I use in the workshop, about 27 euros a pair. Hopefully they work the way I want. But this looks promising. And with a platform mounted, it actually works as intended. And ultra smooth. Making the platform was simple. You measure the cabinet opening, add two times the material thickness and subtract 42 millimeters, a measurement given by Bloom. The board's depth is 310 millimeters in my case, since I'm using the 320 millimeter slides and the board needs to be 10 millimeters shorter than that. I then cut two more strips to the material thickness that I screw to the boards. That mimics the box that you would typically build for these slides. My build is more of a special case and I'll link the instructions from Bloom in the video description for more detail. The back of the drawer box, or in my case board, needs a hole for this pin here. To locate the hole you could use the dimensions given by Bloom or align this part of the slide here and slam it into it to make a mark. The clips are made flush with the front, or in my case a clamped on piece, and screwed in place. The slides get mounted about 3mm in the cabinet. If the front is flush on the outside, if it's flush on the inside, you add the thickness of the front. When installed, the draw box, or in my case the board, just clicks into place. The fourth draw will be a regular box and I'll use this kind of hinge again. And although I got a higher quality one of these, they were about 12 euros a pair, quite a bit cheaper than these ones. I already cut the simple draw box parts, it again comes down to the width of the opening in the cabinet, minus two times the slide thickness, and I can test the fit without any assembly. And this seems pretty good. Here I used a simple draw construction with just a screw and two dowels in each corner. For a cheap and easy draw bottom, I glued some scraps of laminate flooring together, cut it to size and screwed it on. The first part of the slide gets screwed to the box with the slide assembled using the slots for up and down adjustment later. And the second part gets screwed into the cabinet with the slide disassembled, again using the slots for front to back adjustment later. And then the drawer can be tested. It's nice to see that the more expensive slides also work significantly better. But with this type of slide I could achieve a much taller drawer space and I wanted that. Anyways, next comes this compartment here for the plastic trash and I think I have a pretty cool solution in mind that will be difficult to execute. It starts with the front and while I was cutting that I also cut all the other fronts at the same time. The original cabinets had relatively thick white edge bending glued on. I don't have that so I cut all that away and replaced it with oak edge bending. Hmm, should I empty that? Gluing this new oak edge bending on is quite tedious, but it makes for some excellent footage like this and the result is absolutely worth it. And now back to the compartment. 
Right now the plastic trash bag is in this kind of rack thing with a lid. I want to use that lid part mounted on the front of this compartment and then you tilt it open. And as you tilt it open, it then automatically opens the lid. That's the plan. Don't think this is simple. I guess you can see that this lid part doesn't fit, but I'll be using this one. First of all, the front gets installed with these cup hinges. I mark the location and this cheap drill guide that you can get with these hinges takes all the guesswork out of the installation. Mounting a lid was pretty straightforward with this simple screw together and half open box and a few 3D prints that match the existing parts on the lid to mount it while still being able to easily remove it. No big deal. The auto open feature on the other hand, that's a different story. I was fiddling around with springs and linkages for like half a day and now I think I have a reliably working prototype. There's a string attached to this lever arm going around this wheel to change the pull direction. And this end of the string will get mounted in the cabinet with some slack. And then as you tilt open the front, eventually it will get tight and then open the lid. I mounted the prototype to the side and the lid also needed some modifications. Moment of truth. Yes, it works. The string is clamped to the back. Let's see if this works. And it does. <laughs> this is so cool. The best part has to be that this mechanism is visible every time you use it. So cool. Next I reinforced all the working parts so they would last longer than a couple of video demonstrations. The bearing is held in place by three screws. Instead of a cut off drywall screw that barely doesn't fit through the bearing, there now is a short piece of aluminum tubing going into an eight millimeter hole in the thin wood. And with the spacer, the bearing fits on that and is held in place by an M5 countersink bolt to keep it low profile. Then I slightly changed the geometry and shape of the lever arm to remove some interference I had before. And we ignore that I screwed up this part here twice. Then I added a second string on the other side that holds the weight when it's fully open and not the mechanism. And to make sure this one gets tight before the other one, I added a spring. And then two of these furniture dampeners in the edge to make it somewhat soft close. Also the best way I found to cut the string is with an electric lighter since this immediately seals the ends. Mounting the front of the small drawer was straightforward using some squeaky screws. For these drawers, that's a whole different story. What? It looks terrible. Wait a second. Ah, that's better. Who's gonna clean that? When there's a full crate in the drawer, there's a lot of leverage on the joint surface as you open it. I can't screw through the front and MDF is terrible for screws under stress, so pocket holes would never work. With the minimal space, I had to get creative to make something solid. I marked where the fronts should be and clamped them in place. Then I got some beefy 5mm thick steel brackets to sink into the wood surfaces. I marked their positions and removed that material. Roller table for the platforms and handheld router with the guide for the fronts. It feels pretty solid now, but only in one direction. And another problem is that it's not square yet because the steel brackets aren't square. My solution for that is difficult to explain without seeing the finished results. So just watch me build it and then I'll show you how it works. The threaded rod gets tightened in the front and with the upper nut I can now pull on the front to bring it into square and lock that position with the third nut. Now it feels solid in both directions and works with a full beverage crate without the front flexing. Fun fact, I enjoyed making these fronts so much that I screwed this on backwards so I could remake the whole thing and like cry for an hour. <sighs> Next come the handles. They really give the whole cabinet a more finished look. 
And with that, all drawers are finished, which means I can remove them again. As mentioned earlier, I now added some diagonal bracing. I have one in this direction and two in this direction and with a tension belt I bring everything into square and then lock this position in place. This also should have added tons of stiffness so when I lift it up here it shouldn't flex anymore. And it doesn't. Then I 3D printed and screwed some leveling feet on the bottom. You can buy leveling feet of course, but I needed some with a shallow profile. And then I could finally bring it into the apartment and see if it actually fits. The cabinet is in place and fits. The best part has to be that these drawers actually clear the heater. Didn't measure wrong. Who? Last part missing is the top. I want to make it a piece of kitchen countertop that will be flush with this kitchen countertop and also follow along this contour and then go all the way up to the windowsill. I transferred the contour onto some thin MDF and cut it to a template so that when the alignment is right it's also flush with the fronts. To finish the template I removed this sharp turnier and made it a more gradual transition with a curve. I had to shorten the big countertop from the old kitchen in a weird position because it was too heavy to lift into the workbench. Then I cut it to width and aligned the template with the front edge. I marked and removed the bulk with the jigsaw and then copied the template shape with a top bearing flush trim bit. This couldn't cut all the way through so I flipped the top around and finished with a bottom bearing flush trim bit. Next I'll apply this iron on edge banding. I think this iron is about twice as old as me. I also sealed all open particle board and the underside with some varnish to protect it from moisture. With a tiny round of a bit, I trimmed the overlapping edge bending and made it nice to the touch. Man, I'm happy with that. This turned out great. However, I didn't film what it took to get to this aligned state. Adjusting the whole cabinet so everything is nice and level and aligned and square took a really long time, but it's done now. And of course this whole cabinet is also screwed to the walls so it won't move and won't tip over. Then a few finishing details like trim and some more outlets. My brother-in-law did all the silicone stuff and that turned out beautiful. It gets more and more finished so time to hit the microwave oven. I can hide the cord pretty neatly behind everything and plug it into an extension cord behind that last cover that I had to change to a snap-on system. The last part was making some trim to close up the gap on the bottom and to hold that in place I made a 3D printed spring bracket that fits into a slot and kind of presses the trim onto the floor with some weather stripping as a seal. With that bottom trim added and a few more details I just didn't have the time to show you. This is finally finished and I'm so happy with how this turned out. A fun and challenging build that will see daily use, obviously, because here will be a coffee machine. It will also be interesting to see how long this mechanism survives. Maybe a couple years, we'll see. But honestly, I'm also quite happy that it's over now because it took a really long time building this. But let me know in the comments what do you think about such a custom furniture project. It will be interesting to read the comments. And if you want to know even more details about this and support me at the same time, yes it's that part of the video, head over to my Patreon. There I have additional content and also a longer version of this build where I show just more details and more of the build. Thanks to everybody who already is there. I really appreciate every support I get for making these videos. And then I think I'll see you for the next project.